Hi there. I'm going to respond to Mike's last week's teaching, or I guess this past Monday's teaching. And um, I'm going to start by just saying that as we were um, challenged to ponder verse 21 of Galatians chapter 2, I did ponder it a lot. And it brought me back to this past summer when my family was actually going through a New Testament reading plan. And um, we were always taking notes on each chapter that we read. And when I got to Galatians 2 and this part where Paul is speaking to Peter, which is from partially through verse 14 to the end of the chapter, those are all in quotations. That's all Paul speaking to Peter because of the choices that Peter was making to withdraw from people who had been tainted by sin in their past, um, which we all have been. Um, but there was this thing where they kind of um, categorized the Jewish people were, quote unquote, righteous by birth. And the Gentile sinners were sinners by birth. And um, sometimes I, I, because I don't, I haven't lived in that culture, right? I'm, I'm, I haven't experienced the Jewish customs and, and how it was with the Gentiles in those days. So sometimes I think of me having grown up in the church from when I was a baby, always, always having been churched. So kind of my background almost would be able to say, hey, I'm kind of righteous by birth. I've been churched. And then I could look at someone who has never been exposed to Jesus, who has lived a life completely without him, and I could maybe say, oh, they were like sinners by birth. Um, but I'm sure that all of you, or I hope, are following me, knowing that I, I realize that those who are born into the church sometimes come with sins that are more detrimental than those who are walking in maybe blatant outward sin. Because us who, who might claim to be righteous by birth can be like whitewashed tombs with death and filthiness inside of us. So by no means do I, um, I put that righteous by birth in quotes because it, it's not. We, we all have sinned and fall so very far short of the glory of God. Um, so in the summer, I was pondering and pondering these verses, and I kind of had a light bulb moment because I, I could not go past these verses until I felt that I understood what it was saying. And um, I learned that it is the same for someone who has lived a life of sin and comes to God or someone who has lived a life of righteous acts outwardly and comes to God, the same faith in Christ cleanses us. Um, and the same grace of God has to be bestowed on us to even bring us to that faith, which is a gift that God gives us. And in verse 21, it says, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. The law is what gives us our diagnosis. It is sin. The law makes us aware that we have a sickness, a disease that needs to be cured. And so it's very good. Thank you, Jesus, for the law. It gave me my diagnosis. Now I know what I need. I need a remedy. I need a cure. And Christ's death on the cross is that cure. And I loved how Mike said that the cross and God's grace are so very connected. I love that because that is what starts off this verse and what ends off this verse. The grace of God's, God and Christ's death. Um, I love what he said, which is so very true, maybe truer than I even can grasp, is that man in its natural state, it has a bent towards earning favor. If someone does something nice for me, I, I, I right away want to like make them a meal or do something nice for them. I want to return the favor. I want to, even when I'm shown favor, I want to pay so that I can feel like that favor that I was shown is more deserved. Um, 
I'm not sure why we have that bent towards a works righteousness, towards earning favor, towards um, self-effort to gain favor. But it's there. But we are told that we cannot be made right by anything we do. Christ is our cure. He is our remedy. So my thoughts on Galatians 2.21 are that I love that that is what Paul ends his conversation to Peter with. He says, if we're going to start going back to what Christ destroyed. So Christ, he fully uh, met the requirements of the law by his perfect life. He died his death, a sinless man, to make atonement for us who were just warped in sin. Um... Sorry, I'm kind of losing my, sometimes my sentences are too long. So, so um, it, he established, or he met the full requirements of the law. And now if we would go back and say, no, I'm going to add something to it. We're doing a faith plus works. We're doing a Christ isn't everything. He's just a big part of it. And we need to just rid ourselves of that. There is anything extra to add. Christ is everything. Um, and he died for me. His death was not in vain. His death was what bought me my salvation. His death was my deliverance. His death is my victory. Um, I think Sylvia, I think you quoted this verse, Ephesians 2.12, which says... Um, at one time, you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. You were without hope and without God in the world. That was our state. Everybody's state is that. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. And yeah, I grew up churched. I got saved when I was three, and I think it was honestly a real salvation moment. Um, but I just see, I see that without Christ, I would be far. Without Christ, I would be separated from God. Without Christ, I would be excluded. Um, a foreigner, without hope, without God. Doesn't it make it beautiful to see that in Christ we have been brought near? In Christ we have peace with God. In Christ we have been reconciled to God by his death on the cross. He has put to death the enmity, the hostility that was by very nature there between us and God. And he has made peace with God all through his broken body. Um, he has reconciled us to God. We have access to the Father in Christ. Um, I'm going to end this Marco Polo just by re-quoting re the lines of the hymn that Mike quoted. He says, At the cross, there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. The thief that had just been mocking Jesus Christ all of a sudden surrendered and he turned and he, he looked to Christ and said, remember me. And that's when he was delivered. Um, Paul said he was the chief of sinners, but he saw what Jesus had done to bring him near. I am the chief of sinners, yet Christ has brought me near. What a glorious and beautiful way to end that chapter.